I'm going to share with you a, a typical workflow that I would do a lot in my architectural studio back when I was uh, in the industry. Uh, a way that we would work to um, land business and how Forma makes that workflow so much more efficient than the way I would do it in the old times with my Excels and stuff. So um, for this to make sense, <laughs> I am going to be giving a very concrete example. Uh, it's a practical task. It is a you know kind of bread and butter kind of project, uh, but that's a lot of how we would land business. What you're looking at on the screen right now is just a aerial photo of today's site, and this is what site planning is for me: uh, is um, the site evaluations, early site evaluations before you've actually landed the deal, uh, as a way to win business for your studio. So specifically today, we're looking at. She, which is a commuter town just outside of Oslo, Norway. So it's in my in my backyard, uh, which is connected to the, the 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 capital through a 10 minute commute on train. So it's a bustling sort of expanding commuter hub. Uh, and these kind of places are being developed all around Oslo. And I'm sure many here are used to to seeing these kind of commuter worlds. So this is a, a specific case that I worked back in, in 2017, 2018. Um, this uh, sort of uh, uh, storage unit and there's a car dealership and stuff, and it's going to be converted into uh, a residential project. I'm willing to, willing to bet that a lot of people in, uh, in this call have done similar kinds of projects. So first of all, I know this is a very Norwegian case, and I hope you can apply it to your local market and your your country, uh, because you know architecture is kind of inherently local, right? It's uh, what, what what's valuable or what what is good here might not be what's good in your place. But I'm just show you the case, and I will see I will see if you see the the opportunities yeah. that exist. It it sounds it sounds great, Jesper, and I I just want to just add in a. We, you know, this this kind of project has many names, right? I, I understand you're currently calling it both site planning and a way to land business. I'm also very familiar with terms like um, feasibility studies or the first volume studies uh, of a project, and I guess this is this is basically the same as what you are talking about here, right? That's correct. Yes, the first screening of the site, correct. Having a dialogue with the developers program. Yeah. So what's special about this site is that um, there's three different owners and three different lots on the site. Uh, and a tool that they do, the, the planning authorities in Norway do a lot is they, they zone multiple plots together and say that the only way this plot get developed is you, as a unified design, which means that you as an architect work in the balancing act between these different landowners and developers and the planning authorities. Um, to make sure that both parties are satisfied. So you need a, you know, you need to achieve profitability for your clients, but you also need to create good areas for the city. If either of those um, are not satisfied, then the whole plan uh, sort of uh, stops, halts. So it's your job to sort of uh, ensure both, right? And that's, that's what we'll be doing today. Um, so just the key metrics, um, for this site specifically, which we will be uh, diving into as we develop, is um, the building footprint can not, not be more than 70% of the site. At the maximum building heights has an elevation above, above sea level, uh, which we'll, we'll be defining early on. So we kind of have that as a design rule while we, we are designing. Um, am I forgetting anything, Simon, or should I just dive into it? Yeah, so from these numbers, I, I would suspect or I guess that the developer giving you this assignment would see no less than this percentage percentage of uh, housing being achieved on this site, right? Yeah, so that's interesting because for these kind of footprints, you know, 70 footprint, that's an insanely dense number. It's not realistic to create good, uh, good residential architecture on uh, such a dense footprint, or maybe it is, but it's... It's a stretch, I would argue. Uh, but it means that they've probably allowed you to cover a lot of the site with some kind of structure. And then, uh, so one of the things I did was make a, a podium design, for example, which we'll be looking at shortly. 
Right. Anyway, let's dive in. So this is what it looks like before you are um, starting Autodesk Forma or a new project. And the first step is going to be to go from your hub to create a new project, select your country, which is in Norway, and I'm going to name it so as I go, and then send it on. Then you kind of prompt where you're going in the world by looking it up, then you you define uh, the area, map area of what you're doing, and then you order or you initiate the, um, the project. You're then prompted to add contextual data. There are some free databases and there's some purchasable data uh, depending on uh, market. And obviously availability to data is dependent on the market you're in. You can also sort of bring your own data in by importing it. But for now, I'm just grabbing a bunch of uh, free uh, open sources. Open sources, I think it's really cool that Autodesk is adding that to software, um, especially because it's being added with the correct license and attributions. So it's being used uh, correct, I would say, um, being part of the open data community. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding these data sources directly into my project. I'm defining the site limits of my project and just setting up uh, to go, go to town. Uh, one of the things that takes a little bit more time than the others are the building data, uh, depending on you know what kind of provider you're using. Um, so I'm just going to add this in as it, it's coming in. And what we're looking at here is uh, low fidelity uh, free data, uh, but it's good enough for me to get started to understand my site. So this is a site we're looking at today. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I just saw that it you said it was free data. Yeah. Um there's something with the building heights, right? Yeah, that's correct. So this is, you know, um if you just have a footprint, uh, we're just gonna assume a you know, some kind of height, three meters, ten feet, and then you can modify that as you want. To me, as an architect, before I am getting paid for the 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 project. Um, this is good enough for me to get started. And that's what we're looking for. Like good enough, early enough, fast enough, right? Fast enough. Great. So we have um, the site. And what we're next going to do is uh, we are going to add some constraints because we had some rules for the maximum elevation or the maximum height I was allowed to build, meters above sea level. And I'm uh dissatisfied with my design so this is all like you know uh rough and ready recorded not not very edited I removed some loading uh segments and I've sped it up sometimes by like 25 percent just to not lose engagement <laughs> um so what I'm doing right now is I am uh defining the heights of my 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 constraints my building heights in such a way that I can better uh, make sure I'm not breaking the zoning regulations and that I am designing within within rules, right? And I, as a reminder, that was a 70% footprint of site. And then there's two specific heights in, in the, the zoning plan. And these things, they are, you know, customizable boxes. You can union them, you can split them, you can do uh, all kinds of Boolean operations on them. Uh, just to quickly understand or like divide. So in this case, for me, I have parts of the site which is unbuildable or it's zoned for something else than buildings. I'm just going to go ahead and chop that off. And then I'm going to reduce the height of the southern part to be the same as the regulation. Um, next up, I'm just going to... Um, mark out the zones which i need to keep in mind as i as i am designing as you you remember that the site consisted of three parties um there's a owner in the north uh one in the east and one in the south um and these three parties need to work together to to uh, agree on how they will develop the site or else it won't be developed at all uh but obviously um Trying to keep it fair between these parties reduces the friction and risk of development. So each of these parties are interested in sort of making sure that they get theirs or that 
there's a, a minimum amount of transaction needed between them to to make this a fair deal for for the parties. And you are kind of, or I am kind of, the person in between there. So what I'm doing now is I'm pulling up, um, pulling up just mass things to just see like what, what would it look like if I just maximize massing within my um, uh, within my my zoning constraints. And it's an absolutely unrealistic architecture, of course. Uh, but what it does do is illustrate like what is the 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 massing madness that is possible, and then going from there, from that knowledge I'm picking up, I can start to design uh, more uh, complex and realistic proposals afterwards. And this is an exploration phase, right? We're not talking architecture at this point. We're just exploring options. So looking at my constraints, you can see yeah, some of these buildings are too tall. So I know now the, the number of floors I can fit in my southern part, and floors I can fit in my not northern part of the site. It's not great architecture. It's just a massing study filling in the site. And as you can see, that's a 79% floor area. So there's some reduction in floor area I need to, to remove. And doing that is, you know, it's a, it's a very, it's very cool how you just do footprints and number of floors by just pulling it up, playing around with this directly in browser. It goes really fast and you can start to run analysis on it from day one. So here I'm looking at the operational energy of uh, the, the westmost building. And I can define like what I like to look at the whole site, just parts of the site, what's the sun conditions like, and so on and so forth.